Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. This video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own research, make your own decisions. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a direct question. Do you believe, all right, forget everything that's happening with you know all the fear and all the FUD happening right now, but do you believe that given what's happening right now, that it's any less likely that they are going to continue to implement the new system? Do you think that they're just gonna scrap the new financial system there they've you know spent years and years and years uh constructing and building out the architecture for a new internet have built those companies up into what they are now they've already started integrating those services into the existing tech companies banks institutions so on and so forth um, we're seeing announcements come out nearly every day at this point so do you believe that it is any less likely today than let's say a week ago do you think it's any less likely today that they're going to continue to implement this system and we're going to stay on the timeline that we are on as far as when the iso protocol goes live when all the cbdc's get rolled out and in general how this is going to be implemented over the next two to three years do you think that anything has changed with that timeline or that that is somehow in jeopardy that they're just going to scrap something that has been in the works for many many years Right. However many years, that's dependent on the person that you ask and the amount of information that they could pull up on that. So I would ask yourself that question. Now, for me personally, I go back to what I said the other day. I believe that if I do nothing, and that just means sitting and writing it out, whatever happens, whether it drops to 30, 29, whatever, 28, I think that we would hold the 28 range um, because that looks to be, but take put put no stock in that. Put zero stock in anything that I say about price action over a shorter time frame, several months or even a week or two. All right, put zero stock in that because that's how much confidence I have <laughs> in any type of short-term price projection. So it makes the most sense for me if I just do nothing, I just ride it out with what I have, I believe that I have about a 99.9% .9 chance of achieving what I set out to achieve. So knowing that, it, it and not just that, not just that, okay? Knowing that, but then also knowing Bitcoin supply, done that. Ethereum supply, doing that. I can't, I can't find a reason to be afraid. I, I, I can't. <laughs> Seriously. And for those of y'all, if you saw my community tab post this morning where I post the supply chart and I, and I had everything broken down and then I structured the question the way that I did, guys, it is an open forum. Anybody. I, I genuinely, I'm not mean, saying this, you know, sarcastically. I genuinely want somebody to try to explain this the best that you can, okay? Uh, there'd be a prize for, for whoever can, can somewhat make sense of this in, in some rational way. Because I cannot, for the life of me, understand how there could be more selling than buying happening on the spot market specifically take everything else out of the equation i cannot for the life of me understand how there could be more selling than buying happening on the spot market over the last six months given supply has dropped by 150 probably 160 thousand bitcoin because again the supply chart is in aggregate all right if there were people if large whales, if large institutions were completely getting out, all the big hands were getting out, they would be bringing said Bitcoin back on exchange to sell, and we would see that on the supply. What is not factual about, about what I just said, okay? I mean, so I, I can't find a reason to be afraid. And, I mean, when, when you detach yourself and your emotions from the price... It is a very, it's a very freeing feeling, okay? It's probably been eight or nine months since I had any, it even triggered an emotion inside of me. And the more that I looked into how the market is structured, the more that I looked into how heavily all of these liquidations that are happening right now, there's probably liquidations happening right now as I'm doing this video, all right? It's probably, I mean, that's just what it is. As soon as I figured out how all this thing is structured, I said, oh, it's just a big scam. Uh, yeah, this is just a big scam. That's all it is. This is how they manipulate the market. This is how it all works in a general sense. I'm not saying specific exactly like this, but this is how the market is structured. And if you can have supply going down for long periods of time for six months, extensive amount of supply withdrawn, 150,000, 160,000, that's a decent amount of Bitcoin, okay? That was, I believe, five or six percent 
of all of the Bitcoin that was on exchanges. It's 1% of all Bitcoin, almost, but it was 5 or 6% of all the Bitcoin that was on exchanges. Withdrawn, but yet price drops by more than 50%. It's, it, I laugh at it. I do. I, I think it's funny. I really do. Um, I, I don't think it's funny when there's people who have large platforms that don't ask basic questions, that don't at least show both sides of the story, that don't go over all of these things. And the very ones that are pushing, last point here, the very ones that are pushing all the fear right now are the same ones that encourage people to trade leverage. The very same ones, for the most part. Now, there's some that don't promote leverage trading, but also crank up the FUD to 11 in times like this. But for the most part, most of them promote leverage trading, or they have a bunch of leverage traders on their channel to promote leverage trading. So it's all a big scam. It's all a big scam. And I know if I do nothing, in my opinion, not financial advice, right? You should do what you have the most confidence in. That's why I said that three weeks ago. I said, look at where, three to four weeks ago, I said, look at where your assets are and you should start looking at going to the places you have the most confidence in if your assets are not already there. So look at where you have all your resources and say, okay, where's my confidence level relative to anywhere else I could put it? That's the most, that's, that's the key right there, relative to anywhere else I could put it. So I know if I do nothing, in my opinion, I have a 99.9% .9 chance of achieving what I set out to achieve when I got into this market. And you add that on top of supply going like this, you add that on top of there's never even been a pause with the institutions as it relates to them adopting this technology. And I know the general timeline that they're on for implementing the ISO protocol and for rolling out CBDCs. And so I just can't find a good reason to be concerned. I really can't. So I understand why people are, but with, with more knowledge and understanding of how all of this works, especially how much the derivatives market affects the spot market, guys, it, it's, it, yeah, it, it, I, I know what I'm looking at. So it, it doesn't really bother me. It, it, there'd be no reason for me to be worried. Okay. Um, the, the only part that sucks for me is that when I buy and then it goes down, and if I would have waited another week or something like that, I could have bought cheaper, right? But I'm sure that whenever, whenever this turns around, I'm going to be sitting on some degree of capital and I'm going to say, shit, I should have bought yesterday or I should have bought last week, right? That's not me advising you to do anything. I only advise you to do what you feel most confident in, even if that's not anything over relating to Bitcoin and crypto. So... That's all I have for this video. I know that if I do nothing, I'm going to get to where I want to be, in my opinion. So there's no, there's no incentive for me to be, or there's no reason for me to be worried. There's no reason for me to be afraid, right? <laughs> I mean, hey, who's ever, who's ever causing the supply of Bitcoin to go like that? Who's ever causing the, the supply of Ethereum to go like that? Uh, they don't seem to be too worried, whoever it is, you know. So that's that. That's all I have for this video. Thank you everyone who has liked, share, and subscribed. This was not financial advice. Please make decisions you are most confident in. Take care everyone. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next video.